do this teacher's workshop on our new flexi speaking and performing syllabus. We're, we're very proud of um, where we've come from and we hope that it'll be really useful, a really useful syllabus for you as teachers to use. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the exam committee that I chair and that is Pam and Helen and Dell. And we could not have done without Jess, who we invited on our tech person, our proofreader, and another person to bounce ideas off. So thank you very much to all of you. Um, this is what we were doing in the holidays, a large part of the holidays. So you'll realize where it came from. Last year in lockdown, we were worried about our entry numbers and wondering what we could do about it. And so we came up with the Flexi Speech and Drama Syllabus, which proved to be very popular and quite a hit with a lot of teachers from the junior grades right through. We also piloted a Flexi public speaking syllabus that just a few teachers used. And then once we got the feedback, on both those syllabi and from you, the teachers, and from examiners and candidates. We then looked at where we had to improve things and what we could do to do that. And we came up with the idea of combining the two and having a very flexi syllabus. So this is what we want you to leave tonight's meeting understanding that this syllabus sits alongside our present yellow speech and drama syllabus and our present green public speaking and communication syllabus. It is <clears throat> called flexi speaking and performing because you can do <clears throat> one of three things. You can either choose to um, select all speak to my competitors from both sections, Ahi and Rua. Or secondly, you could choose <coughs> to select all public speaking options from both Tahi and Rua. Or your third um, option is to take some of each and put that together. It may be as a teacher also that what you select this year you might select different options for those candidates next year so that they get a rounded go at all the different activities. But it's entirely up to you. And we thought that in these days of discovery learning and students driving their own learning, that this was really going along side current and so that it may well appeal to candidates and to so that's just a little bit about that and I'll hand over now to Pam and she'll take you on the next step. You need to unmute yourself. Yes, we are. Sorry, I double clicked. Uh, right, so we now we are looking at some of the differences that you'll find in the um, flexi speaking and performing. I want we want to focus on those differences tonight rather than on the um, the things that are, are the same. Uh, so the first, just an outline of what I'm going to cover. We'll cover the timing because you'll notice in the syllabus that that is quite different. We'll cover managing time in the examination um, and we'll cover managing that reflective discussion. And then Karen will take you on a, a little bit deeper into the journey of reflective discussion in teaching so that you can put those things into practice. So if we look first of all at the timing in the exam, now you'll notice that there's a focus on the, uh, you need to focus on the overall time rather than on the individual tasks. So keep on 
preparing your individual tasks to the allotted time. And I think, um, for instance, at grade um, three, I think it is, there is three minutes allotted basically for each section. And they've got to do four sections in all, including the impromptu. So that means there's 12 minutes of prepared work or be it some of it might be impromptu, but there's, there's time allowed for that. And then there's a little bit of extra time for that reflective discussion and so on. So estimate the overall time of your tasks, including the impromptu, and that should set tally with the stated overall time for the tasks, not for the exam overall exam itself, because that's a little bit longer. So prepare those individual tasks, estimate your overall time, and then that should tally with your st stated overall time. I think it's just something that you just will get used to quite quickly, but it gives you a bit more if somebody wants to be a bit longer with their talk and a little bit shorter with their poem, well, that's, that's as may be. Uh, so we move on to the next one, which is managing time in the exam. Now, I, I know you may be thinking, well, it's the examiner who has to manage all the time in the exam, but you can help the examiner, please, to manage that time. There will, because as you will realize, there'll be a much greater variety of tasks to manage. So, and that's why we've requested that all groups have a program. And I'll give you an example of a program later on, but we'll just talk about it for the moment. Um, but then you need, when you create a program for your group, you need to number the tasks as in the syllabus. So Tahi one, Rua two, three, whatever they might be. And then the program goes to the exam with the copies of the texts that you need to, to send in. And I think what that program does too, it helps your candidates to be very clear about what their, their texts are, which sections they're doing. Because it might be that they're doing a poem and there might be two choices for poems. And that, there might be in, um, in one grade, there, there is a, a, an, own, an own choice of poem, but then there's also a poem that the candidate's written. So it's really important that you label that correctly so the examiner knows what they're looking for. Because nine times out of 10, the juniors don't quite know which section they are actually doing. Um, so that helps that candidates to be clear and it also helps them to be aware of their turn to present and be ready to set that up and I think that's very important because there's an examiner you can also we can also guide them to do that so what else do we need to think about to manage time I think the key thing is as um, Karen said before know your syllabus use the learning criteria and use that glossary that's in the back. And you might have noticed if you've explored that far that we've got quite an, I suppose, an extended glossary this time. Um, and I, that's because so often when I've been answering questions, somebody will write in a question, what's a contemporary drama? What do you mean by contemporary drama? And it's actually, the definition is in the, um, the, the glossary. So please use your glossaries because I think you'll find that it's much more helpful now. Um, and I think overall, when you get to getting to the exam, a prepared teacher equals confident candidates equals a smooth running exam. And that's what we all want for our students is to them to go in, feel comfortable and come out feeling as if they've done the best that they can. That's really important. All right, where do we go to next? So the next thing that's different this time is that reflective discussion. And again, there's um, information about that in the, in, the, um, uh, in the glossary. So a definition of reflective discussion is really is looking back on the tasks you've performed to gain insights into the process that you've used and thinking about materials or texts you've used in order to develop a better understanding. So what we're looking for is the process that students, uh, we want them to understand that rather than the end result. Oh, my teacher said I go louder here and I emphasize that word, etc. So it's we need students who are looking for students who can understand what they're doing and perhaps just chat about it a little bit. So if we move on, please, Jess. So reflection, as I said, is the key focus in the syllabus and we want candidates to understand the process. And I think if you can reflect explore, reflect, some of you probably do this already, or you do it and you don't actually even call it by, call it that. But explore reflective dis discussion as a teaching strategy with your own students. 
And if you just look at this little, you might have to move the um, people at the side a little bit. But if you look at this lovely little diagram that, that um, Jess has found of a speech bubble on one side with all the scrambled thoughts and then them very organized in the other thought, I suppose when we're talking with students about reflective discussion, we're trying to get their scrambled thoughts and ideas organized into a continuous thread that, that is easier to be understood. So thank you for that bit, Jess. Mm -hmm. um, so if we think about it, for juniors, it really goes on a continuum from grade from junior initials right up to, to grade eight. So for juniors, it's just going to be a simple conversation about what they've done. You might, we might say, well, can you talk a bit more about your book? Um, I'm really interested in what you think might happen at the end of this book after the last page. Or it, we're just looking for ways, ideas about thing, something that the candidates are thinking for themselves about their, what they're doing. So it, it'll be using questions like that. And again, Karen will have some more ideas, I think, uh, after I've finished. So moving on to the seniors, it's obviously a more focused discussion and examiners will expect to focus some reflection on those aspects of theory in grade five and set eight. If you will know, I'll go over those when we look at the, the syllabus in detail shortly. Um, and Speech New Zealand is looking in the theory section which is taken over the whole exam, not just in a, this now is the time to discuss this, we're looking for a broad basic understanding of concepts, not a detailed analysis, right? Um, and we're looking for how that knowledge of relevant theory assists the performer. Knowing about how you make consonant sounds helps you to be very clear in your speech. And those are the kind of things that we're, the broad basic things we're looking for. Because those theory aspects were something that a lot of people were concerned we were losing with the old um, speech and drama syllabus. So we've worked really hard to try and, and bring those in this time. So where do we go next from there? Um, so overall, students might not be asked to reflect on each task. In fact, they probably won't be. There's not time for that. But what, at least, and in the seniors, at least one of those tasks will be, um, will reflect, one of the reflections, sorry, will reflect the, um, the theory section. And if some tasks are shorter, maybe that somebody has a very short poem, well, then that might be balanced out by a bit more reflection time. So, so the, we, we'll balance those things on the syllabus. And we'll still use group reflections just as we would with group discussions. So all those things will be, be happening overall. So that's all I want to say just at this point on reflective discussion. But I think Karen, um, Karen is going to carry on now. Thank you. Yes, well, I've just got a couple of um, things that might help you in your teaching to prepare students for this. And some of you probably already use journaling as a teaching tool, just like they do in the schools. And that often we're talking to students and they're talking in their group and there's a lot of discussion, but they don't always remember um, what we've been talking about or how they got from A to B. So it's quite a good idea if you could build it into your lesson, some way of journaling. It might be that they just record it into their phone or it might be that they pop something in their book um, before the end of each lesson, twice a week, whatever. Simple things. What were today's decisions about my poem? Why did I make this change in whatever piece of work working on. I want to do this talk because, reasons behind it, I can bring this character to life by such and such. I chose this extract because I was wondering about and how can I improve? And, you know, there's hundreds of others along those lines. And when you're teaching in groups, as most of us are, students will feed off each other with those reflective questions. And if you want to use journaling, then they've got it there um, to go over, so they're not just panicking two weeks before the exam. We'll just move on to the next one, please. So this is just um, 
to use reflective discussion as a teaching tool, which you'll already be doing. But sometimes because we might call it something else, other than we don't think we're using it, we think it's something new. Whereas you all will have been asking questions such as these, why did you choose this? How does this character make you feel? What did you do to bring this character to life? Well, I'd like to know more about how you planned your program. Why did you use that section of the play? What did you enjoy about this piece? What was the main message of your talk? Why did you like? So again, there's lots and lots of other ways to do that. But just bringing in the word reflection and getting them used to discussing the process is what, is what we need. So that's me on reflection. And um, now I think we're going on to the syllabus, are we? We've, we've got a program sheet that we'll just oh, have sorry, to look sorry, at. Sorry about, that. sorry yeah. about that. And it's just a sample, pro, a suggested sample program sheet. A lot of people, some teachers have been worried about oh, doing a program sheet, but in fact, it's it's probably harder if you've got a big studio. I appreciate that. But it also makes gives you a double check. Have, has everybody got everything? Have we, have we got it all sorted? So Jess, if you could just put up that program, that sample program. So... This is just a, a grade four flexi and speaking and for one, two, three students. We'll put a copy of this up on the resources on the um, website, I think would be an easy way to, to deal with this one. So, you know, they're doing, so notice the numbers down the side, one, two, three, four, five, six. You still need to put Tahi six or Tahi one or whatever the students are doing. So, or it could be just T six, T one, that would do. R1, uh, but probably preferably Tahi. Um, you know, so they're doing a characterization first with all of them. Then one of them's doing the talk. Bella's doing her poem, welcome speech, and it's got the details there. So the examiner can pop that on the um, on her report. Um, then we've got um, a prepared reading, a memori memorized prose um, from the book. And then we've got an improvisation, which features just two of them have chosen to do an improvisation. And one of those students and a different one have chosen to do the interview for that, for that section. So you can see the examiner and you, you're in, in your teacher, you might have a slightly wider range of things, activities in your class too. So having something like that can be a really good, good way of um, making sure that the, you know what the, you're doing, Kids know what they're doing, the students, and um, the exam. Most of all, the examiner knows exactly what you're doing as well, or what the students are doing, because it does make it everything flow so much more readily within the exam. So that's a program, and so I think now we move on to the syllabus itself. Are there any pro? I suppose are there any questions up to now that are burning questions? You might like to. Somebody's coming. No. Not at this point. Yes, because we're we now we've got ten minutes left, so we we might go through. No, we these haven't. We quite... finished at seven thirty, don't we? Eight thirty. Oh, mean. of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe how time went so quickly. Fine. So we've got the junior grades first, Karen. So I'm going to start off with initial, and before I get into initial. The most important thing is that you always take a good look at the box. And that box is at the beginning of every grade. And so what it will tell you is how many tasks in total, how many from Tahi, and how many from Ruha. Ruha, Ruha. And so in initial, um, we've, we've upped it to three tasks. So they must do two from Tahi, and then the third can either be from Tahi or Rua. And that means that they could choose to do all prepared at initial if that's what they wanted to do. So that's something to always remember about initial. And we'll go on to grade one and 
there, if you look at grade one, you've got three tasks still, two from Tahi, and then you've got the third is from Rua, impromptu. And there you'll see that we've got um, the first time we do a prepared mime, which is down at eight, and we also do prepared prose at seven. So those are both uh, relatively new. We did experiment with them last year. So now we'll go on to grade two. And here we've got, we go to four tasks, two from each, two from Tahi, um, one from Rua, and the fourth can either be from Tahi or Rua. So again, this flexibility in what you think is best for the student. And um, we've got the prepared announcement here, and we've also got the article. Um, so they're, they're both relatively new in there. And then if we go to grade three, we're still at four tasks, two from Tahi, one from Roa, and the fourth from either Tahi or Rua. And there we've introduced number five, speak an original poem or story. So that's, that's something new there. And then we'll go to grade four. And that is in grade four, you've got four tasks still two from Tahi, one from Rua, and the fourth from Tahi or Rua. And we've got there, which is new, the devised presentation number seven. And the learning criteria, the learning outcomes are straightforward and they, uh, they will be on the opposite page. Um, because before there was uh, and the one that we did last year, there was quite a bit of trouble accessing the learning criteria. So I'll hand over to Pam now. We move on to the more senior grades. Um, and, and this, I won't go through how many tasks you need because Karen's been covering that. So you should have the idea of how that works. But the key thing in, in the senior grades is throughout the exam, candidates should be prepared to reflect on the work prepared and use, including the use of modulation to enhance performance. So that means there might be a question relating, say, for instance, to um, a poem, and it, it might be, let's chat about your choices in terms of modulation in this poem. So it, it's open, it's, and it, again, it's that broad general knowledge we're looking for, not an in-depth, well, there are so many different kinds of inflection and so many different kinds of pauses or anything like that. It's just a broad understanding. The examiner wants to get the feeling that this student understands why they're doing things and what they're doing. So the things that are, apart from that, the things that are new in this is number four, which is script and deliver an objective report on a newsworthy item or event um, and present it as for radio, television or online medium. So that's um, a really interesting new one for Maybe there's some students um, who are doing media studies at school. There's all sorts of reasons why they might choose something like that. Um, and then number seven is speak an original poem or story, which of course that came into the other into earlier grades too. So that continues here. And then number nine is a devised presentation. Um, and each time you come to devise, read it carefully because there are that does vary slightly. So this is perform and devise, a devised presentation for a specified audience and purpose. So it might be that it's for um, a seminar at school on mental health and you're devising a little piece on bullying. Your students are devising a little piece on bullying, something. And that's it's a simple direct way of, of linking the purpose and, and what they're doing and the audience. So then we move on to grade six. 
And here we've got two throughout the exam. Candidates should be prepared to reflect on the task, the work prepared, including the use of voice. So there something might be something like, I'm interested to learn about how you developed different voices for the characters in your storytelling. So it's just digging a little bit deeper. Well, I use a different resonance, I you know, different or my breathing, relaxation, all those things can come into an answer on, on those sort of things. Um, then we go down to Tahi number nine. Again, it's a devised one, I think. And this is for, uh, but this is time it's based on a specific, and a specified novel for a specific audience and purpose. So maybe you're doing a seminar, the students are doing a seminar in an English class or something, and they, you want something about a novel. So that's an end to something like that. When we move down to Rua and the improvisation section, which is number two and number three, the impromptu storytelling, both of these need to include a change of mood or emotion. So we're just looking at some specific elements that you might need to, to do in those. So just again, for teachers and for examiners, it's a matter of reading the syllabus really, really carefully and being familiar with it and getting students used to doing things like that. So moving on, thank you, Jess, to number seven. And the reflection on theory in this one is on articulation and clarity of speech. So it's really, it's the importance of that rather than the, the actual detail in that. So if somebody, there's a new section in this on, on giving a comic performance. So if somebody had chosen that, you might get asked, well, tell me more about your attention to clarity when you were working on this comic performance, because comic performance is something where, where specific, very precise articulation can be very important. So that's why it might focus on that. All right, so where do we come to that? Um, oh, number 10 is a comic performance. So that's new. Um, so for, again, a specified audience and purpose, and this can be of any genre, so, um, or your own material is a little bit more about that in the um, glossary, I do believe. Um, and if it's an original work, we need an outline or a script should still be provided. But if it's not original, well, then we need the script. And of course, it must be mem memorized um, for if, it's, if you're working from a script. All right, and moving on to, what else is different there? Um, oh, in Rua, we've got um, improv and impromptu story. Again, this time they feature elements of conflict or tension. So those things need to be built in. It's pretty much what students do anyway, but it's making sure they understand what they're doing. Um, and then the number five is a little bit different. And this, I suppose it stemmed from leadership exam uh, you know syllabus in the past and also some of our more some students really want to dig a bit more deeply into literature so we've suggested talk about a researched leader or writer and research three leaders or three writers and after a brief discussion the examiner will select one of those and specify an audience and example and give you an impromptu talk on that so it's doing some research into an area that that particular student might be really interested in and then um, giving an impromptu talk on it so again it's it's suiting the syllabus to the to the students it's going to be really interesting to see what the uptake is on some of these um, less familiar things shall I say so grade eight, um, throughout that exam, you should be prepared to reflect on the work prepared, including vocal techniques and delivery. So delivery includes a lot of things and it, and it also includes body language and that's something that's in, also in the syllabus. Um, so it could be that if somebody's done a persuasive talk, um, the examiner might say, well, I'm interested to discover why you use specific gestures within your persuasive talk or why you use specific vocal techniques to in, ensure that your message got across. So there could be you know, ways that they might angle themselves in to talk about one of your sections and still get a little bit of theory coming in. Um, the new things that are in there, 
device or the divisor performance piece nine and ten both center around devising performance pieces one is based on the work of a dramatist or theorist or drama theorist and the other one is based on a a theme just a, a performance piece based on a theme which gives them fair, fair amount of scope there um and then we go into Rua and again Oh, no, this time we've got bring a book of poetry or a book of speeches. Because remember, we've got students doing this who may be public speaking students or maybe speech and drama street students. And read an extract at sight. Um, but they also have to introduce the poem or the speech as well as the book and then be prepared to discuss the ideas and the themes in, in those speeches or, or poems. Um, number two and number three are the improvisation and impromptu storytelling again and this time the element of status needs to be included in what they're doing so those are the key differences through those those grades so I think that concludes our shall I say our more formal section of this this seminar so now really the floor is open for for questions and and mm -hmm. discussion there's some things coming through on the chat. Should we check those? Um, where do we get an online copy of the syllabus? On our um, website. It's on the website already. So if you go into that, you'll find you'll find it there. I don't think it's listed at the moment on the the front page where it's got all the different coloured syllabuses, but it is it's definitely there if you do a search. Um, can somebody please e examples? Well, it would, a group discussion would simply be, in my understanding, it would be the same sort of starters that you might use for three or four for one for an individual person, and the examiner would just work to ensure that it, you know everybody in in the group was involved in the discussion as well, much as you would do in your own class, because you don't always direct a question immediately at one person; you might direct it at the at the group so you'd work to see that they all all joined in or understood the need to all join in karen it could be a little bit there about um how they decided who was going to be which character in the drama yeah. that sort of yeah, thing that, that sort of thing could work yes. well mm. yeah um the syllabus link oh that's the syllabus link on there somebody thank you very much andy for putting that on um Denny, a definite date yet on publication. I think we covered that before. It's actually on the website. It's published on our website. We're just waiting for it to come back from the printers. So it, it should be out within, by the time it gets out to teachers, it might take two weeks, but it should be within, a, you know, by the end of next week, one would hope. Um, from Speech New Zealand to everybody by the end of the month. Right. Any other questions now? Thank you, Lee. Hi. Um, it's really exciting, all the things that are in here. Good. I'm just thinking, how do I present this to um, the parents? I'm in a place where Trinity has got a stronghold, mm -hmm. and I'm now teaching there, and they keep coming back with, oh, but Trinity's better overseas. How? And I'm looking at this going, this has got so much in it that would be great to do. How do I get over that hump with parents who've got this mindset? Karen? Well, it's, um, it's very difficult because it is a mindset and um, we can't argue that it is international trinity. Um, but we can but, argue that it is it is of greater value overseas because I don't think it is. No, but, the, but we can't, I agree with that, but we can't say it isn't international. But I think probably our, um, our point of strength is based on last year because Trinity is dependent on overseas travel here and, um, you know, given a pandemic like we've had and who's to say there won't be another one, well, then students haven't been able to go through the grades in many cases as they would have normally. Meredith, would, do you want to make any comments on that? Or can you add anything to that discussion? If I can unmute, I can. You are unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yes, I, I think that the big thing is that we cannot guarantee um, any future travel. Uh, I was at a seminar, a different seminar today, um, and organisations now are looking at a five-year gap before we get that um, restoration of international travel, which astounded me, um, which means a, a lot of our students will be out of school by then. So having some sort of an overseas qualification uh, that is so limited, so narrow focused um, is, is of no use to them at all. Whereas when you look at this flexi syllabus, particularly, and I've taken that right up with our students, with my students now, that's what we're doing. And I don't talk about anything else. Um, and the variety there, all the different skills, instead of being narrowed down, to do one of these, one of these, one of these, and get out the door. You would say you've got to look at the well-being of the student, the educational value to the student. Mm. If I may, if I, if I could just say something there too, that I think that there's a slight misunderstanding with parents in New Zealand because we have Speech New Zealand and we have Trinity, that they think that that is the case in England. But I've had students who've done Trinity exams here go to England and start school there and say we've done Trinity and the speech and drama teachers said what's Trinity because <laughs> there are so many syllabuses over there I think people think that everybody in, in the UK will recognize Trinity but they don't New Zealand is actually one of the biggest centers for Trinity exams mm -hmm. um, and the other thing too I think that we all came to value maybe during the lockdown and things was this thing of support New Zealand made and Speech New Zealand is New Zealand made and didn't we feel the benefit of that last year mm. when we could examine and poor old Trinity had so many issues. I think Helen's point is really good about over in England being so many other um, speech examining bodies. I was the person who decided I really wanted to go and visit Trinity College when I was in London years ago and first, first of all, went to Greenwich and asked for the tour, found out it was music. And nobody quite knew where the speech and drama was, but I found out that it was on the embankment. Three hours after walking down, people over the road didn't even know where it was. But I just went through and I saw it at the bottom. And it was just this tiny little office in a big office block. Um, so not at all like I imagined it would be. I thought it would be like the Trinity music out of Greenwich, but it was nothing like that. Well, that's, that's helpful because I'm keen to do this with the young ones coming, but I've inherited some students who are already on the Trinity path. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So I will keep talking to them because I can, personally, I'd rather they did this. And this mm. is actually a great tool because often the sticking point in schools um, can be the talks. This way mm. I can gradually bring them in. Yeah. Um, so I'll just keep talking to the parents. Yes, <laughs> Good on you. Yes. Good on you. Um, Did you want to say something there, Jess? No, I, I was simply um, going to jump on uh, Helen's point that uh, I think this is a great opportunity to just flip the narrative uh, with, those uh, with those parents who think of Trinity as being the established norm uh, because that is no longer the case. And we have, we've taken to heart so much, uh, all that our wonderful country has to offer. People are more open to that, they're more receptive to that than they've ever been. Mm. Uh, and with a great new syllabus as well, it really is our chance um, mm. to show what little old speech New Zealand can do. Mm. One other small point, Lee, you can get a badge for your blazer for <laughs> your speech New Zealand exam. Thomasita, you wanted to say something, welcome. Uh, this is a new topic. The, some of the senior grades uh, the de devised presentation. Yeah. So let's say you've got two or three in a group, which means you can have eight or 12 minutes. I'm hoping that is a little bit more into the theatre and action style thing. So we could do something a little bit more creative, not just one piece of drama, but something that might include bits and pieces worked together, that sort of thing? Yes, I like think a so. mini program? Yeah, Exam examiners should be, will be open. But I would right. be 
be wary of using too much that was like if you were doing a program you 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 might have mostly um text work so it would it, the text work that say some poem or reading should be a minor part of it or a, a oh yes. yes i'm just imagining yeah. doing something a little bit that's not just a devised drama yeah i know but, what you mean yes um, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, no it sounds a little fascinating. bit more um, mm. fun yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah. thanks that would I be... just, uh, can I just say something to Lee uh, just about the last piece? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. yes. Oh, um, I, uh, as a local secretary, um, I had 140 students who normally do Trinity last year in November. 140 of them came over to Speech New Zealand because they were um, being a bit mucked about by Trinity. And um, I could give you the name of two of the teachers who you could talk to who have said their kids had such a good experience um, and they've always done Trinity, these two teachers, and their kids had such a good experience that they're going to stay with Speech New Zealand. So um, if you wanted to, Lee, I could give you their, uh, those teachers' emails and then you could have a, a chat to them um, to, to really see helpful. what they thought you could pass on to your parents perhaps mm -hmm. might. You know, might be good. helpful. Yeah, that would be helpful. Mm. Thank you. Yes. Okay. That's great. <laughs> if you email me, Lee, and then um, that would be easiest. If if you email me, because I'm I'm in the book. So for which region? Auckland. 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 Thank Auckland. You. Must be some other Thank comments. You, Jenny. Enjoy getting out to your horses. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> bye bye. I have a question. I, oh, here I am. Good. Yes. Um, this is just uh, can we look at one of the tasks that you've got down here for grade five, Tahi, uh, and it's <clears throat> number four there. Um, Script and deliver an objective report on a newsworthy event. Mm -hmm. Presenters yep. or radio, television, or online medium. Yes. Um, I'm just, I, I can't just quite get there with that one. How do you see this um, happening? It's the scripting and delivering that I'm having a bit of trouble with. Well, if you're going to do something on, ra on radio, say, yes, yes. it's going to be scripted, isn't it? Uh, well, it could be. Yes. Um, it could be a report on something that's been been scripted. Right. The newsreader would have a script. Yes, they would. Yeah. Um, perhaps I just need to keep thinking about that one. You know, sometimes um, is it possible they might just have headings and they might just want to sort of extempore take their way through it. That could be a possibility, actually. No, it's just sort of yeah. um, made yeah. me wonder about that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Something mm -hmm. we can think on further, can, and, yes, and perhaps a little bit more. Have, yes, it, because they, as long as they spoke, they perhaps gave their headings to the examiner. Yes, yes. So that they're, right. they're, they're speaking to those headings. Yes, yes. Yeah. An outline of the talk would be fine. Right. I, speaking to that, I don't think we've ever intended them to give a copy of that no. to the examiner. But it's just that usually with a talk, you're never going to read it. You will just have headings. But when it is a news report, as though for radio or television, you may have a script because that's the way it's done. So it might be done from a teleprompter normally, but yes, our students yes. aren't going to have one of those. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's just the fact that it is a slightly different thing and that it may be read, but they've got to be able to use a lot of eye contact and bring in that skill of being able to seem like they're talking directly to an audience, yes. even when they're reading. Yes. Hmm. Just and, while and, I've got the floor, uh, mm -hmm. may I just say that I, flipping back to Trinity, I have heard that they are training New Zealand examiners, uh, one from Hawke's Bay I've heard of and one from Auckland. Mm -hmm. um, it's hearsay, but I think it's happening. Mm. Well, illogical, um, wouldn't it? Yeah, mm. the examiners can't get over from London for obvious reasons. Uh, it's the only way where they can do it. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
So they are doing some online exams too. Five students from last year doing Trinity exams next week who couldn't do them last year and they're using the local examiner. And I asked for her qualifications and she listed one of them. You'll like this, Dunny, if she's still there. Um, (laughs) Diploma of Veterinary Nursing. (laughs) (laughs) I looked it up, V-E-N, dip, V-E-N. So I thought that was interesting. <laughs> oh, uh, the other, I had a question, um, and it's gone away now. I'll have to mute so until it comes back. Oh, come yes, back. I know. If we had a sudden lockdown, yes, and we wanted to move over to a, a Zoom exam, mm-hmm. would there be an allowance for, like there was last year with the the, the dramas to do some alternative Something thing a little bit differently yes yeah. i think there there should be i'm just wondering if we left that on i know yes, there we is did. Something. we did mm-hmm. we left it on mm-hmm. and Good. also the option to video the drama yeah right we, so to and, video the drama a week or so before but it's just that you know now we seem to be getting these sudden lockdowns i'm just yeah. worried yeah. if yeah. I, we've prepared a drama because they always seem to want to do a drama there is something yeah. coming up from national office which will be out within a day or two which is goes goes through all the the covid protocols for teachers for examiners and for right. um, local secretaries so, so they're, they're right, which is wonderful because they're right on top mm. of it in looking right. at the eventuality mm. yeah i think right. they're going to send it tomorrow they're aiming to Mm. Right. So we can move ahead with that. Yeah. Thank you. There must be more questions. We must have done it all very clearly. Comments, questions. (laughs) Sometimes it's not until you start using something that you think, ah, now what do I do? Yeah. Has Helen got her hand up, Karen? There's a there's a big big hand by Helen. Big hand. (laughs) Big hand by Helen. No, oh, oh, that's Helen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I was just going to comment that we, I inherited also some Trinity students and they did have a local uh, lady come and examine and she was a very well qualified person who may be familiar to you all. So um, there are people around who will do Trinity. Um, mm. And that's good. That's good. Good for them. Uh, it was really touch and go, and I'm very, very grateful for my students' sake that Speech New Zealand was there for us last year. Good, good. Um, I just, I see we've got a couple of minutes. Mm. I just thought maybe I would talk just a little bit about um, the teaching of the syllabus, and that some teachers may find the huge array of tasks just a little bit daunting when they're looking at it. But remember that you're the teacher and you're in charge of what happens. So if you decide that you want all the students in that group to do a poem, then you can tell them they're doing a poem. If you want them all to do a speech, they can do that. If you want to say, this year we're going to do Tahi one, seven and nine, and Rua three, and next year something else, then that's up to you. You can choose how you use the syllabus with your students, just as you can choose whether to use it at all or whether you still continue to use the yellow one and the green one. So it's, it gives the teacher a lot of flexibility and you can use as much of that as you want. If you want to offer every student every option, then that's great and you'll have lots of fun and you'll certainly, nobody will ever be bored. Um, but if you do want to narrow it down for them, then that's your prerogative to do that. I think one of the key things with the more senior students is that if they're doing flexi, they have to. They do it all in one hit. If, it, if yep. they're looking at grade six, seven, eight, for instance, whereas with the um, speech, with the other syllabus, the original syllabus, you can still. If you do that, you've got three bites of the apple, if you like, or two bites and one bite. However, you want to work it, however suits your your situation. Because mm. I, I had some students today who said, "Oh no, we want to take it in two bites because I can't remember too much all at once." <laughs> <laughs> Tell them to do two impromptu things. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that one. <laughs> yes. I wonder, Karen, Pam, Helen, if one of you would perhaps speak briefly to what the intention is for those students who reach grade eight uh, in the flexi syllabus but want to go on to do a diploma? Well, I could speak to that, that they then go on to do 
the diploma of speech and drama in the yellow syllabus, or alternatively, if they're public speaking, they go on to do the diploma, the diplomas of public speaking. And so if we did have quite a bit of discussion last year that with the Blexi uh, syllabus, they may not be prepared thoroughly enough to do diploma. But again, that's up to the teacher. And so if you make sure that uh, during their stepping through the grades, they do do a variety of things, then they'll have those skills for diploma once they get there. I think I might decide to do grade eight of the green or the yellow syllabus before yeah. moving on to a diploma. Yeah, that, that's probably a good idea, mm. I think, because it is a slightly more, shall I say, acad academic rather than practical syllabus, the, the, um, the yellow one and the green one. Mm. Um, perhaps a good opportunity too to make the plug for the advanced associate diploma and the efforts that have been made in that direction to make that more accessible to students. Um, the online exams an hour and a half, that's, I'm not going to say recent, uh, but relatively recent. Uh -huh. uh, the assignment option now available, only 2,000 words at Advanced Associate. Uh, they have three months to do it. So a few different options there, even if they wanted to do the more uh, advanced associate mm -hmm. diploma with the theory as well. Good thinking. Thank Just got a you. question there from Lee. Is the performance certificate being looked at again? It was mentioned in a previous Zoom. Yes, at the moment, Lee, we're not looking at the performance certificate. We did we did um, trial it in the public speaking and communication pilot um, exam last year. We did trial it, but but we decided that there was enough in the syllabus and enough in the two that run alongside it without having that certificate. However, Karen, can I come in here? Because I'm in a situation where with my international students, they need something that is higher than a grade eight without doing the full associate. And so I discussed with board members the possibility of, in my case, um, putting forward uh, a request for that, that certificate level, just slightly for a, higher. A specific, mm. a special exam. And we do yes. have a facility mm. to be able to do that. If you have a real need for that, Lee, um, think about yeah. that, or perhaps even contact Meredith and have a chat to her about that. Yes, I'd love mm. to talk to you about that, Lee. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. And if you do have- Lovely to see so many people here, great. If you do have any other questions, um, please forward them to the office and then we'll look at them and get back to you. And it's great to see you all here. And thank you to the exam committee who have done so much work. And Jess, our tech lady, we couldn't do without you. So thank you very much. You're so welcome. Have a good evening. Uh, thank if, you very much, everyone. If anyone's feeling sociable, I'll turn the recording off. Uh, if the meeting.